All right, you guys, welcome back to another deck video. Today, we're actually going to be talking about, I, I want to call it an updated list, but it's not really that updated. I just wanted to remind you that this thing exists, and this is a little bit more polished of a build, but it is a Vile Plume Lock. Um, more and more recently, we've been realizing that item cards are are really, I mean, obviously really good, but like taking a much more front seat and making your deck kind of click. The thing that we've always discussed about, like, oh, why wouldn't you just build a deck revolving nothing, just all around item-based draw, and every turn you just pop off? And that's because Spirit Tomb starts can really slow you down. If you just played nothing but items, your opponent could start Spirit Tomb, get set up, and then just roll train on you. So that's why you have to play a solid, you know, 24 supporters in every deck so that Spirit Tomb starts don't just ruin you. Um, but even with the Spirit Tomb starts, I feel like Grady and I have been kind of shaving, shaving off the supporter count on a lot of decks and as such it's making vile plume way more pun intended viable um just because you're locking your opponent out of games and if you can judge them into a like a dead hand or um you know just get if they just draw nothing but items and nothing but no like unplayable cards you're just gonna straight win purely based off that um, so the build looks like a lot like it did when we did the tournament, if you remember that Vileplum build. It didn't win a game in the Vile, in the tournament, I think it did win a game, might have won one, it got really close. Um, but it is something to look back on. Uh, the only real thing that's kind of, you know, I, I guess I'll point out a, a few key cards, I suppose. You know, you have Trevenant Break for spread, uh, the Azel for spread, the Coco for spread, so really you're just spreading them and slowly killing them that way. Um, if you need to one-shot, you have Poltergeist from this Trevenant, and then Poltergeist from this Miss Magus as well. Um, Miss Magus can attack for one Psychic if you have uh, Dimension Valley out, which we do play. Um, and yeah, for Pokemon, I don't think there's much more. The 2 2 2 line is just so you can guarantee it early. You notice we're not playing a Porygon Z. That's because Devo Spray. And there's just a lot of um, arguments that I. Greedy and I had a discussion before. Not an argument, but a discussion about Porygon Z in this list. Um, I'm playing the Jirachi as a way to de evolve stuff if you need to, just kind of as a GX and EX, or GX and a Mega Counter. That's really what it's used for. It's not used for like the initialized plays that have become so broken. Um. But the reason I'm not playing that is because uh, your only way out of Porygon Z is to AZ it. Uh, you can't mar uh, you can't um, uh, Brian is compassionate because of uh, the EX. It's it's an EX. So like, um, I mean, I guess you could Acerola it if you attached a Rainbow Energy to it. Where's the Rainbow Energy? Rainbow Energy. You could Acerola it. Um, but you know the consistency of that I don't think is is worth the Porygon Z. I find myself a lot of times being like, yeah, Porygon Z would be really nice, like Porygon Z judge and you just win. But odds are, if you're doing that anyways, you're already kind of ahead of them. I don't think you ever need that big of a swing just because Vile Plume is such a a lockdown deck anyways. And if they ever get enough energies on a Pokemon to start one shotting you and going crazy, uh, Trevenant and Miss Magus are usually enough just to deal with that one Pokemon. Um, especially since that one Pokemon is going to be softened up anyways with all the spread that's in the deck. So what I have found is that it's, it, yeah, Porygon Z would be really, really nice to seal games, but it's also just, like, not needed, and Time Hollow is enough to deal with those GXs. Um, outside of that, the other weird stuff is that there's, you know, if you notice there's no Elite Four in the deck, that's because it's, an, you know, it's a universal item lock, so you can't play them when you need to. Really, the only items in the game are stuff that is going to draw you a crap load of cards really quickly to try to get that turn one Vile Plume. It's just a lot of item search. You only ever need, you know, the combo plus Broken Time Space or, um, Forest Giant Plants. You just need the one 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 line and any of these, so a lot of searching cards. That's why you see stuff like Timer Ball, which you normally don't see, um, you know, if you wanted to add more of these searching kind of cards, like if you don't think Evo Soda's worth it, turn two, you could play Pokemon Breeder Fields, that sort of thing, just to get you some extra searching power. Um, and then outside of that, we're just playing like the most busted, I think it's like 49 supporters or something like that. We're just playing the most broken supporters you can. A lot of Pokemon searched stuff like Trevor that you normally don't see, stuff like Celio's Network that normally you don't see. Um, just because searching under item lock is, is really hard. The one thing I don't like about this deck necessarily is that the low amounts of energies, so that's where Rosie's Research and actually Steven, where is Steven at? Steven um, shines a little bit more in this deck because it can be hard to find energy at times, so those two cards get a little bit more of a boost in a deck like this. Um, Cynthia helped big time because it was an extra shuffle draw when that came out. Um, Brock's Grit for just recovery because you don't have much outside of Trump Card. Um, by the way, we don't play Versus Secret or Pal Pad, so make sure that your your trump card, uh, your Lusamine, and your Marleys don't find their way into the discard pile, or else you'll never be able to recover anything ever. 
Granted, that doesn't happen too often because your opponents, like, whenever they draw a trump card, they'll, like, play it because they need to get rid of cards in their hand, I suppose. Um, but, yeah, outside of that, this deck seems... Uh, oh, and then the warp energy is strictly in here so that you can retreat with Vile Plume if it ever gets Lysandered up. Um, I've noticed that Lysander and Guzma stalls on Vile Plume happen quite frequently, so you almost always want to have a Brineys or an AZ in your hand to get ready for that, or the warp energy, or the rainbow energy Ace Aurora combo just in your hand waiting to go. Um, granted, like if you can get that Floatstone or Fluffy Berry down on your Vile Plume before you evolve into it, that's even better because then it takes out their Lysander stall out. Uh, what else in this deck? I think that's about it. There's nothing else, like, super weird. There's a row six in here for Garbodor. It's really the only reason that's in there. Um, but yeah, Ace Trainer is super busted in this deck, because you're gonna Ace Trainer into, if you, if they take an early knockout, you Ace Trainer them, and you give them to Vileplume, and if for some reason you knock out their Claydol early, or if they don't get it after you Ace Trainer, you just win, period. Um, yeah, that's pretty much about it. If you guys have any questions on Vileplum, I think it's really, really, you know, the, the deck list and stuff isn't that new. It's just, I think the meta of U150 is slowly switching to these lock control style decks, and Vileplum does that very, very well. But if you have any questions, please let us know. If not, have a great day.